the esophagus and the trachea, what are their features? When it comes to stress, stress mainly targets certain organs, primarily the stomach, the stomach meridian, and so on. And the esophagus, the stomach starts to get pulled up in that direction. In other words, the esophagus contracts and pulls the stomach upward. But since the esophagus contracts, it's like Uncle Ivan pulling a bowstring. So the back develops hyperkyphosis, meaning a curved hump. The esophagus in this case becomes straight and stays that way, but it starts to press against the pericardium. And if this persists for a long time, adhesions can form between the esophagus and the pericardium. This is felt as heart pain. People go to a cardiologist and the cardiologist says, according to the tests, everything is normal. That's why these adhesions need to be removed. That is between, right here. The stomach, if this is the heart, the stomach is positioned at this kind of angle. Since our esophagus runs and exits along the spine, slightly to the left, and immediately transitions into the stomach, it runs at this kind of angle. And if you watch videos of laparoscopic surgeries on this part of the body, it turns out that on a cadaver, you can't see this and wouldn't even guess it. I realized this when I was watching a laparoscopic surgery. So the heart, the apex of the heart, beats through the diaphragm. You can feel all of this, and it lands right on the lesser curvature of the stomach. And I only realized this while watching those videos. So it turns out that the heartbeat also massages the lesser curvature of the stomach. But if the stomach tightens up during stress, we can get the stomach back to normal, but then we immediately feel that it sticks to the ribs and the stomach wall again. It feels like they're being torn apart again, literally within a few hours, as if there's some kind of adhesion process going on there. Naturally, this puts pressure on the heart. The heart can no longer function as it should. And what else does this cause? Here, thickening occurs. When the esophagus and trachea thicken, the thyroid gland also stretches, and as a result, it gets compressed by the sternocleidomastoid muscles, plus the shortening of the esophagus when we arch our back and the neck moves forward. If it moves forward, it presses against the collarbones. So at the point where the thyroid gland touches or gets compressed by the bones, calluses form what doctors refer to as nodules. In other words, if you check in this position, the person is lying down, the head is raised and stretched out, this nodule shifts. But if you look when the person stands up, they line up exactly with the spot where the gland touches the bone. And our doctors just love to cut all of this out. Instead of simply correcting posture to prevent this, to eliminate the effects of stress. And what else? When the esophagus shortens, it pulls on this part. So when the neck moves forward, this laryngotracheal tube shifts in this direction. And now we don't even have a chin anymore. It starts from here and everything sags like this. So in order to restore these facial angles to relieve tension, in other words, to correct our posture so we don't get a hump, everyone keeps telling us, straighten up, straighten up. But when you straighten up, everything here gets pulled tight. Our task is first, we make the esophagus thinner, more flexible, and start to pull the stomach down. Then we'll be able to work with the diaphragm as well. So right now, see, look here. It's impossible to get under the ribs. But when we pull the stomach down, we can freely massage the diaphragm under the ribs. And also, if anyone has studied the vagus nerve, the heart actually forms in the fifth week of embryonic development, and it's located right here. Then it descends. Naturally, the delicate nerves stretch as well, and that's precisely why we have the important recurrent nerve. Here, the significant vagus nerve gracefully descends, and from it branches off the crucial cardiac nerve, which effectively supplies the vital heart. And around the major aorta, it loops in a distinctive manner like this, and then carefully goes back up here, completing its intricate path. If the vagus nerve descends, it goes down along the spine, and here the esophagus is closer to the spine, and here, after, right where the Adam's apple, or thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, thyroid, is already formed, artery, oh, trach, trachea, then the recurrent nerve runs exactly between the trachea and the esophagus, and it supplies the thyroid gland, the vocal cords, and the thyroid gland. This is the main control. There's also another nerve that comes in there. That's why we need to restore these parts. What are we going to do? What mistakes do people make when doing this exercise? 
Do they either press down or something else? Our task is just as this cervical section goes, goes. And so we come and start, look like a snowplow works, like this, superficially. Yes, so we're not, the, we're not choking the person, we're just starting to work. In this way, we relieve tension along the entire length of the esophagus and trachea at the same time. Naturally, the bronchi are also freed up, and we also bring the thyroid gland back to order, because the thyroid here has been stretched, and it's not feeling very good either. But this way, we'll return it to working condition and set it right. And also, for those who work with energy, not everyone will be able to do this right now. Maybe just a few, maybe no one at all. There's also such a thing as an energetic response. You're asking for energy, you're just showing with your hands where you're working, but it's the energy that's doing the work. So you're asking your higher self to restore energy, to restore the energy balance. Especially since here we have the throat chakra, no joke. And when you work, as you can see, I'm pressing very lightly, no force is being used. Now I let go and wait. And now the tissue starts to change. You'll immediately feel the change, you'll notice the sensation, and that's your response, and you let go. And so, at a slow pace, you work smoothly like this, and restore the energy balance. Especially since here you need to restore the chakra energy balance. So now I'm starting to work. You work with smooth, slow movements. First of all, pain occurs when the body doesn't have time to adapt. So for example, you press here, and the tissues start to change. The blood leaves this area, and the tissues change. But if you do it abruptly, it will hurt. That is, the body didn't have time to adapt, so you always cause pain. In other words, pain during massage is a defect. It's absolutely unacceptable. This is called aggression towards the person. So if there is pain, the body starts to resist. And the more it resists, the more the massage therapist starts to press. As a result, well, it's not ethical to work this way. When you work gently, the body accepts the message and starts to help you. It doesn't resist. And now, as you'll notice, it will start to move, it will become thinner, and release the stomach, because it will become freer here. I'm waiting for a response. Not everyone will be able to do this. But gradually, gradually just observe the reaction, and you'll feel that you also start to sense it. Her trachea is already starting to move. By the way, it's already getting smaller, thinner. Keep working. There's a particular feature here. The GCS is already going at an angle. So here we go under the GCSM. We work through the center via the GCSM, and then we work directly on the, also directly on the trachea itself. So keep in mind that you have an intersection here. In the same way, you restore the vocal cords because the tension leaves them. I have a lot of people who do vocal training come to me for massage. And notice at first the movement was only here near the collarbones, but there was no movement toward the mediastinum. But now the movement is already shifting there. So we are completely releasing all the tension from the mediastinum. And now it moves very easily. Well, this spot bothers me from time to time, but now it feels softer. Even your little skirt has gotten smaller. It's getting smaller because its diameter, as you can see, has already decreased significantly. But it will become very thin and very flexible. Like with the Adam's apple. Can you also get rid of the Adam's apple like that? So, the Adam's apple... First of all, it's on the outside, it's the thyroid cartilage covering it, and across there is a ring called the cricoid cartilage. And there are two vocal cords there. That's already the arytenoid cartilage. And what we're doing here is we're actually restoring this. 
The cricoid cartilage itself is still cartilage. It stretches with difficulty, but when this expansion reaches it, it inevitably affects the vocal cords, making the voice sound rougher. So, raising the pitch of the voice, I'm telling you, for those who do vocal training, I have a lot of artists coming to me, as well as singers, and teachers at universities and schools who talk a lot. Their voices become hoarse. And also, look here, it's already softer, you see, the contours of her face are already becoming less pronounced. Even just by working with this area, you're already giving a lift here. Now I'm already approaching the angle of the jaw. And it works really well here, you see, I'm already working all over, and now I'm starting to move up here as well. Because if the neck moves forward, the trachea comes in here, and this area also starts to sag, pulling downward as well. That's why, in these areas, you process them at the same time. But here, since she's still young, she doesn't have this sagging yet. But because of the enlarged trachea, I chose her to show that this isn't a sentence, that it can be fixed. You see, it's already become smaller. And only where the cricoid cartilage is, it still keeps the size of the cartilage. And now, after we've done all this, our task is to stretch it out a little bit this way. See, I'm pulling it slightly toward myself from both sides like this. It should also start to move. Now that I've pulled it, it's become a bit tighter. And again, I just do it once. Assess it yourself, feel it. It seems to me it's become more elastic, firmer, right? 